Hi, hello, welcome to Oracle. I'm back with this video session uh, which covers one of the most regular scenarios which we as DBAs will face in our day-to-day -day work. So though this activity might look simple at the moment uh, by the time you cover this uh, session, but hope that it will help most of the DBAs who are not aware of it. I have seen most of the uh, junior DBAs or intermediate level DBAs who are not knowing this concept clearly. So that is one of the major reasons why I picked up this concept for this session. So coming to the concept for this session is what you see on the screen, number one and number two that we are going to deal in the current session or the current video you can call. So we are going to learn how do we identify a problematic session details with the process ID from the database server or if you have the process ID on the application server as well, if you wanted to find the complete session details on the database server, how do you actually get the details is what this particular video covers. So we have two problems in our hand and these are the two problems which generally every DBA will face, uh, might face in day to day work. So whenever you see such problematic or uh, these problems in your day to day work, this session will actually answer you how do you get uh, the complete session details with these details in hand. What are they? The process ID on the database server and the process ID on the application server. So let us start first of all uh, creating few sessions on the database server from the application server. So whatever you are seeing on the screen is one of my servers wherein I have my database server running on my VMware workstation. So I will connect to my VMware workstation using my putty session. So this is my VMware workstation where I have my database running on Linux operating system. So you see that uh, there is database already running with the database name called OraDB. So let me show you that it is running and I have my listener also up and running. So to showcase this example, I'm considering this server as my database server and then my Windows machine, whatever you see on the screen, I will consider this server as my application server. So what I'll try to do is now I will try to establish connections from my application server that is my Windows server to my database server and then let us start this activity. So just to start with, so let me open command prompts. I will open multiple command prompts. So at least three to showcase this uh, scenario. So from the first one, I'm trying to establish a connection uh, as system user using SQL plus. So Oracle one, two, three, and I have already TNS entry with the name called CONN on my application server. So it has connected very easily to my database server. Similarly, I'll try to establish another two connections now with the same details. So let me mark it up, copy it, paste second connection, paste third connection. So now there are three connections from the application server to my database server is what I have created as a scenario or I have created a case like this. Now let us concentrate on the first problem. Consider you have been, you are a DBA and you have been monitoring your database server and you have identified that one of the server processes has is been actually occupying a lot of memory or a lot of CPU. So how do you actually first identify on the application, sorry, on the database server, the top process which is occupying memory. I have this command which I prefer to use on the Linux platforms. So if you wanted to actually use it, you can do it. So I can also uh, append it with the head 10. So these are the top background processes or the processes on the database server, which are occupying memory and it is sorted in the descending order. So you can see the top process on the operating system, which is op occupying most of the CPU, sorry, most of the memory is your S1 background process of the database. But this command I have given you guys just to identify if there are any application server ba related background processes on the database server, which is occupying most of the memory. So in case in real time, you have identified with the help of this command that one of the background process with the name called local is equals to no. There is a background. There are three background processes now on the database server with the name called local is equals to no. See, this is what I was saying. Why? Because I have established three connections from my application server, you will see a background process with the name local is equals to no. So these are the three background processes. So 
identifying the uh, background processes which are from the application server is this way and if one of these background processes are in the top of this above command that means there is a problem with the uh, one of these background processes from the applications is what we are trying to identify from the database server because the first problem we are trying to find the answer is identify a problematic session details with the process id on the database server with this command after monitoring the server behavior we will try to identify the process id of the applica uh, application server background process which is problematic consider there is nothing at the moment but in reality you will find something with local is equals to no so what i'm trying to do is consider that 3071 is the background process on the operating system which seems to be problematic on the database server problematic in the sense it might be very high cpu utilization or it might be very high memory utilization so after knowing this uh, 3071 background uh, process id on the operating system how can i actually find out what are the complete details of this session so you can basically identify with the help of v dollar session and v dollar process so you will have to combine these two dictionaries to identify this one so let me give you the uh, complete query on top of it let me type it for you and the reason why i decided to type it for you is to explain you how did i combine these two dictionaries because there are already uh, queries you can get it from uh, you know website or google search but i'm giving it uh, just to explain in detail how this particular uh, query has been formed so that you understand bit by bit so select a dot sid and uh, a dot username and uh, these are the two details which i'm trying to get from v dollar session because i'm trying to get the complete details of session at the moment and then i'm trying to you know join v dollar process which is b so i will write a condition how to join these two dictionaries where a dot from uh, in v dollar session there is one uh, column called p a d d r that is process address and you have to combine or join these two dictionaries with the help of these two things because the column in v dollar process which is a d d r that is address is the same as p address in v dollar session so that is the reason i'm taking this example to uh, join these two dictionaries to identify what i wanted and whatever process id we have got that is nothing but spid column name in v dollar process so i'm saying from v uh, in v dollar process spid what whatever whichever is problematic is nothing but 3071 so now you have identified what is the user id sid username and further details after you get sid of the session which is problematic on the operating system definitely it will be very simple for you to identify the further details of the session so with the help of this particular query and with the help of this particular query first you have been able to identify what is the problematic query on the top and what is the process id of it and with the help of that process id you have identified what is that session is actually doing so this might be one of the cases that uh, you get answers from uh, any other sources as well so we have identified a solution for the first problem now let us try to identify a solution for the second problem which you might get very rarely but you should be ready to answer it so if you if your application administration team for example uh, your application development team will not be actually maintaining your application servers definitely there will be application administration team where on the application server if they identified that one of the background process is actually consuming lot of cpu or lot of memory on the application server and if they capture the process id on the application server now let me show you whatever i am speaking now for example on the application server i have my task manager like this and i have established three sessions to the database server isn't it so all these three sessions are with the tool called sql plus so i have to identify where are the three sql plus background processes on the application server it is here so this is one two and three so being an application server administrator if application administrator has identified that one of the background processes which established a session with the oracle database has been occupying most of the cpu or most of the memory then definitely 
your application support team might reach DBA to ask what is this particular background process with the number called 4772 is doing on the Oracle database. This question you might get regularly. So if application support team has given you only process ID of the background process on the application server which we call it as user process. If they give you only process ID of the user process which is consuming high CPU and high memory you as a DBA how you can able to identify all the details of the session is the next problem. So now consider as an example here out of these three background processes as an example consider 4772 is the process ID which is a problematic on the application server. Now if you wanted to identify the further details of this process ID on the database server you will try to log into the database server like this and then you can query from here. So uh, you will be able to uh, query with the help of the background process ID called 4772 if I'm not wrong from the database server also. So it will be available in V$ session actually. So in the V$ session there is a column called process. Let me show you what it is. There is a background process called process if I'm not wrong that will give you these details that will actually help you to uh, link these details with that. As you see here process. So just query select SID comma username and if you wanted to see SQL underscore ID and further details that is fine. From V$ session where process like because process is the column which doesn't only have the process ID of the application server but it will also have the further information. Let me explain after I get these details. So you can say uh, 4772 followed by any other details. This is the one. And if you wanted to see also what does process actually have, you can say process from V$ session and this one. And see here, 4772 is the process ID of the application server and 4356, do not get confused with this number, this is the thread number. So each and every uh, user process will have a unique thread number. So uh, this is the thread number of that process. So this is the way where you can get answer for the second problem to identify a problematic session with the process ID on the application server. So we have two problems in this uh, uh, video and we have also solution for these two problems. Hope this might help most of the people who doesn't know these basic things and it might be helpful to most of the uh, DBS who are starting up their careers as well. Thank you for hearing to me. Have a good day. And many of such videos are actually available in my website, which is uh, www.orskull.com. As you can see on the screen, uh, you can get into videos and you can find many such videos uh, in my website. But basically you will have to register in the website to log in and access the videos. It is a simple registration. So, and I, I have a regular blogging as well. So all the details, all the regular issues, whatever I, I face in reality, I keep writing in the blog. So you can follow me in the blog as well. And I'm already there in the Facebook. Uh, Oskal Corporation is the, uh, uh, you can search with the name Oskal in the Facebook. We will, you, you can find me there. Thank you for he hearing to me once again. Uh, have a good day.